Okay, so I did my early game duelist build for Dragon Age of Elgar, but it's time to do my level 50 build. This is a awesome necrosis uh, bleed type build that utilizes all your quick attacks and momentum and takedowns and all that fun stuff. So we're going to go over the build guide, we're going to go over all the items as well, and my abilities, and let's jump into it. Now as you can see we are level 50 and this is our skill tree, however, if we were to refund our points you'll see we have this. Now obviously these type of builds work best when you respec, when you are at your level cap. You could follow it path by path if you wanted to, but it does get a little convoluted. My suggestion would be, as 50 points if you only have that, would be to ignore this section for now, and possibly some of this section up here. We'll start with the basics, and we're going to come south to Exploding Arrow. Really good ability, melee based arrow attack, really really good, especially early levels. We're going to come up to the left for Downfall. This basically just means you can do a uh, critical hit if you knock an enemy down. Really really helpful, especially with a fast paced rogue. We're going to come along to Hurricane of Blades as an ability, again really good ability to take early days. I don't use it late game, however we need this to progress in our skill tree. And to do that we're going to come south to Sharpen Edge, penetration plus 15%. Penetration ignores a portion of the fence when attacking. Awesome, absolutely awesome if you can build this up. To the right of that we are going to come to the greater passive of Knockdown. Your charged bow and charged attacks now will deal critical damage versus enemies at low health. And critical attacks are awesome, especially if you do a the hold the triangle one down where you like spin around in the air with your daggers. Incredible attack and do a bulk load of damage to enemies when they're at low health. It's also got AoE aspects to it, so if there's a few enemies like next to each other, you can hit all of them. It would come back to Sharpen Edge, we're going to go to the left and go to Decisive Finale. I honestly have never used this, uh, I think quicker, the light attacks are just better, especially with the equipment we use. From there we are going to come south and we're going to go to Decisive Finish. So Agile Attack Damage plus 10, Charge Attack Damage plus 10, which ties in very nicely to our Charge Burn Charge attacks here. And Final Attack Damage plus 10%, and if we check these stats out, Final Attack is the last attack in a single attack chain, so if you do all your square attacks, the final attack with your light attacks will have an extra 10% damage. To the right of that we are going to take Daring Counter, so defeating an enemy with a strike ability grants Deflect, so just remember that. Deflect is really cool because Deflect ignores the next impact received. If we come back to the centre of Decisive Finish and we come to the left, we are going to take Momentous Occasion. Generate 25% more momentum from final attacks. The effect is doubled when you have Adrenaline, and Adrenaline ties very nicely into our subclass of Duelist. If we check out what Adrenaline is, Adrenaline lands consecutive, hits without taking damage to enter a heightened state, increasing all damage dealt. To the left of that we are going to come to Staggering Finale. Stagger from final attacks plus 20%. So we're really buffing up our final attacks, especially for our light attacks. What is really cool about this as well is Stagger, if you build that up, you end up with your takedowns, and takedowns are insane amount of damage. Awesome ways to end fights. Now before we come south we are going to go back to Momentous Occasion, we're just going to go north to underestimated light attack damage versus health plus a 10%. Coming north from there we're going to take Piercing Strike, so Strike abilities grant 50% penetration, so again buffing our strike attacks. Coming back down and we are now going to take Explosive Daggers, this is a projectile ability, really good, it pairs very nicely with Davrin and Nev, and this is part of my late game skills. From there we're going to come right and we're going to take Traumatize, so take down damage plus 15. So again we're building up our stagger abilities and our momentum abilities. And then we have our takedown damage increased too. Coming south we have Swift Death, gained Quickened after defeating an enemy with a critical hit. Quickened again is awesome. Ability cooldowns refresh more quickly, which means if you have your momentum build up, which we work on, and then we defeat an enemy with a critical hit, and as our build goes on, our critical hits will be on enemies of low health. We gain quicken, more momentum, more takedowns, and it's just a massive circle of huge damage. If we come to the middle, we're going to take Wrath, so critical damage plus 10. Again, pairs very, very nicely with the quickened. And to the left of that, we are going to take uh, physical strikes. So strike abilities now deal physical damage. If we come back to the center with Swift Death and go up back to Traumatize, this is where we follow the skill tree up here. 
and we're going to take Sly Strike. Gain 250 health and 10% ultimate by performing a successful takedown. So again, not only are we now increasing our ability to deal takedown damage, but also continuing the cycle of building stagger to build those takedowns. But now when we land a takedown, we get 10% towards our ultimate and we gain health. Really good for higher difficulties. Continuing north, we are going to go with necessary steps. Prime duration 20%. We don't really need this, but we are taking it because we're making our way to adrenaline. So, successfully striking targets 10 times without taking any damage grants you adrenaline, causing your attacks to deal bonus damage and be more likely to disrupt enemies. Again, this is really cool because with light attacks, with how quick you hit, this will build up very quickly. Now, if you're following this step-by-step -step from the start of the game, you might not be able to go this way yet, depending on your point allocation. I'm just going to fill this out quickly now. You can't take these until level 40 anyway. But just bear in mind, if you are just respecking, we're going to go through this tree now. You can just pause the video and come back. But we are going to go for our ultimate ability of Murder of Crows. And this is awesome. Crazy necrotic damage. And it's just amazing overall. It deals a lot of damage. It will target a lot of people in an AoE. And it's generally just a great attack to have. Continuing to the left, we are going to take another ability I have in my tree. And that is a thousand cuts. This is a strike control ability. And if you remember, the way we now have our thing set up is our strike abilities deal physical damage as well. So everything is coming full circle at this point. It is necrotic damage, which means we have uh, three different types of damage on our ability tree as well. And we have different types of ones that will allow us to do these more often. For example, this only costs one momentum, meaning if you have enough momentum built up alongside our max momentum, you could pound these out and really deal a lot of damage to enemies. Now to the left, charge attack damage plus 10%. Again, pairs very nicely to our saying at the start of this build by holding down the triangle button. We're just buffing that up. We're going to take the trait of Mountain Thrill. The Adrenaline effect can now stack up to three times, increasing its bonus damage and chance to disrupt enemies, which means if you are a very good rogue player and you can, you know, land all your attacks, do all your perfect dodges, you're deflecting, you are going to increase this so quick and you're going to start just piling out huge amounts of DPS. Continuing to the left, we're going to take Adrenaline Rush. So tax to activate Adrenaline is now minus two, so we've gone from 10 to eight. And to the south of that, gain the Adrenaline effect, increase your health and momentum by 10%. And again, momentum equals abilities, and health speaks for itself. If we come back to our 1,000 cuts, we're going to go north to Necrotic Damage plus 10%, a big chunk of this build. We're going to come to the right. For Strike Abilities, apply Necrosis for each unique Primer on the target. Coming to the left, we are going to take Shall We Dance. So this is an attack that I do use quite a bit, and it's huge. You have to time it very well, but once you get the hang of it, very easy to perform. And it deals bonus damage and stagger and adrenaline. An amazing ability. To the north of that, we have Maximum Momentum plus 50. Again, this ties nicely to what I was saying about this. This only costs one momentum, so you can stack these up now. And if you have three of these, you can just do this attack three times. Same with Explosive Daggers. And because they're all different damage types, you have the adaptability for all different types of enemies you shall fight. If we come to the right, we're going to take Balance Flow, do up to 30% more weapon damage, and take up to 25% less damage relative to your current momentum. A nice little tanking ability. And North, Convert Energy. Your charge attacks now consume 25 momentum and deal 25% more damage and stagger. So there is a trade-off here. Obviously, we will reduce our momentum, but our momentum builds so quickly anyway, and we can deal extra damage and stagger. Stagger leads to takedowns, our takedowns are already buffed. Again, everything just comes full circle. Now if we make our way back to Adrenaline, just before our Duelist specialization, we are going to go up to the right for Arcane Defiance. And this is very simply just electric and necrosis resistances. Not a huge thing we need, but it is very helpful. We're going to come to the right, and we're going to take Overwhelming Tactic. So while your momentum is 100 or higher, charged light attacks apply bleed if they're not already suffering from it. Charged heavy attacks apply necrosis if they're not already suffering from it. So again, we're buffing up those charged heavy attacks that we need to break armor that already have bonuses to low health enemies and all sorts. Continuing to the right, we are going to take determination, maximum momentum plus 50%. Again, more abilities we can use. Coming to the middle, we are going to take Lightning Flask. Now, I personally don't use this. If you wanted to, I would not talk you out of it. It is a good ability. It just doesn't fit on my personal skill tree. 
To the right of that, we're going to take tripped, or sorry, tipped arrowheads for two extra maximum arrows. Really good uh, bow. I love using the bow, especially to take out armor and barriers before you close the distance. Come back to the middle, we are going to take both the left and the right abilities. So, the right hand side is the passive improved health, and on the left hand side is burst of speed, momentum generation plus 10%. Again, just continuing that theme of even though we now lose momentum for doing charged attacks, we still gain it quicker. Coming into the center, we're going to take Swift Rebuke, gain momentum when you perfect dodge or perform perfect defense. So again, if you're a really good rogue player who can do these amazingly, your momentum, even if you're losing it for your charge attacks, you're going to be building up incredibly quick. And to the left of that, we're coming down here to Providence, advantage duration plus 20%. And again, advantage is any beneficial status effect, so just bear that in mind. Now, to round out this build, we need to come back down here to where we were with Decisive Finale. And we're coming up to Staggering Blade, Sword Stagger plus 20%. North again to Necrotic Fog, Spending Momentum deals 150 necrotic damage to enemies within 6 meters. Now I personally took this section of the skill tree before I took this one. If you're respecting it doesn't matter, if you're following this guide as you go. Take whatever you think will look more helpful and better for you personally as a player to begin with and then go the other way. North of there we're taking Death's Blessing, so necrotic damage plus 10%. To the right, medium armor mastery. While wearing medium helm and armor, critical damage plus 20%, sword damage plus 20%, perfect defense momentum gained plus 50%. Now, the armor I'm using actually isn't medium. I use light armor and a medium helmet, but I have been using medium armor as well in the game, and I'll show you your options. If you don't think this is going to be helpful for you, you are more than welcome to respect this into something else. I would probably come up here and take either the tool upgrades or the control upgrades. Coming straight up here, we're going to take our Affliction Damage plus 10%. This improves our Necrosis. To the right of that, Perfect Defense applies Bleeding to your attacker. If Necrotic Weapons are active, this applies Necrosis instead. And we have a ability where Necrosis is always active when we enter combat. To the right of that, we have Spill Blood, Maximum Bleeding Stacks plus 1. Coming back to Affliction Damage plus 10 for Desolate Melody, we can come over to Poisoned Reply. So Perfect Defense grants necrotic weapons. Again, not really necessary anymore because we have a sword that gives us necrotic weapons as soon as we enter combat, but we need to take this to access the rest of our skill tree. So to north of that, we're taking our Insidious Rot, maximum necrosis stacks plus one, and necrosis is necrotic damage over time. So this just means you're dealing more necrotic damage over time. And to the right, Strike Abilities deal 100% bonus stagger versus enemies suffering from an affliction. So if you land your Necrosis and then you do your Strike Ability, extra stagger. And that is a quickest way to get takedowns. Coming back to Poisoned Reply, we're going to come to the left and we're going to go with Wrath. Critical damage plus 10%. And to the left of that, Strike Abilities now deal a guaranteed critical hit if the enemy has low health. Which means if you land this and they're at low health combined with all our other abilities and passive we've taken, you can wipe enemies out as soon as they get to low health. This is a very much a singular DPS build, but with AoE abilities and effects and stacking up that necrosis where you can deal huge amounts of damage to solo targets and targets within a close proximity to each other. And with how aggro works in this game and how easy you pull aggro and having people swarm at you, you can turn these singular attacks into AoE-esque abilities and deal huge amounts of damage. Now, we're going to come back to the middle and we're going to come down here where we had Exploding Arrow. And we're going to come to the right for Endure. Lose 35% less momentum when you take damage. I would personally take this very early in the game if you are following this like as you go through the game. This is a lifesaver, especially early levels. We're going to come down for Reign of Decay. Again, I don't use this ability. It might come in handy early game if you're respecting, it probably won't. But we need it to get to the right of Salvaged Arrows. Arrows gained after defeating an enemy, plus two. And with how our abilities work and our Necrosis and all that, you even if you spend your arrows, you will regain them so quickly that you will feel like you never run out. To the north of there, Close Quarters Combat deal 15% more damage to all enemies within 10 meters. Again, another ability I would probably take early on if you can because it's incredible, especially when you are playing a melee-based rogue. 
To the north of that, we have damage versus armor plus 20%, a great little benefit. And to the left, electric armorer. While we're in different armor classes, we get arrow maximum plus 4, weapon damage plus 15%, and stagger plus 25%. It's amazing. So that is the build. Let's go over our items. Now, by this point in the game, you should have these weapons. Um, you might not have them fully upgraded to this point. You might have them more upgraded. Who knows? But this is what I'm using, and the runes as well. So I'm using the Weiss Ups Whale plus 8 for all the light attacks we get. So 15% extra light attack damage, 20% light final attack damage. And if you remember, based on our skill tree, I think it was somewhere in our burst over here, we had extra final attack damage. Well, now we've just piled it on top, especially if we use our light attacks. We gain Rally Party for every third attack you land, and Rally uh, Party's companions deal increased damage. With how quickly we land uh, attacks with our light attacks, Rally Party triggers so quick. And companion cooldowns are reduced by 15% while Rally Party is active, which means not only do we increase our damage, but we're actually acting as a support character too for our companions at dealing their damage. And I've coupled this with a rune for 15% extra damage at high health, because press the wrong button again because what better way to stack up our we have damage extra at low health and now we have at high health too we've completely balanced the build out for our offhand we're taking Ariana's Talon now this is a unique longsword you get this by completing quests so if you need to know where this is seek out a guide or whatever but we're just focusing on the necrotic damage so 217 necrotic damage with 433 stagger 30% necrotic damage, permanently gain necrotic weapons when entering combat, and again, because we have that, our abilities that are necrosis base all trigger and it's incredible, and I've put a rune of 40 added necrotic damage on top. For a bow, the true flight bow plus 8, 25% damage versus armor, ranged attacks with this weapon deal bonus damage to armor instead of barrier, gain enhanced damage when breaking an enemy's armor, and if you can fully upgrade it, this weapon completely ignores enemies' defense, and your penetration is applied as bonus damage. And to really pair it off, 20% extra hip fire damage, because hip firing in this game is actually pretty decent. For a helmet, I've gone from the Golden Cask. I hope I've said that right. 106 defense, 19% ability damage. But more importantly, 20% stagger, 25% takedown damage, 10% stagger relative to your Lords of Fortune allied strength, and as a Lord of Fortune background, this works perfectly. So we now have 30% stagger. And gain health, ultimate, and momentum on a takedown. Amount is doubled if lethal. So again, this ties into our build of how everything is just circular. We have extra damage, extra stagger, which leads to takedowns quicker. We now have extra takedown damage. And if we kill on a takedown, which is very likely, we gain health, ultimate, and momentum, meaning we can do even more abilities. We've tanked ourselves up a little bit, and we can trigger our t huge, big attacks more often. And I put a rune on it of plus 30 defense because, again, why not? For armor, the striking misfortune, I have used this armor for a lot of the game because I think it's so good, especially for this build. 15% necrotic damage pairs very nicely to have all our abilities and our rapier. 25% necrotic resistance because why not? Using the necrotic ability cleanses all afflictions. And we gain immovable, if not already granted, when you take necrotic damage. And immovable, immune to physical reactions and interruptions. And I put a rune on for 250 extra health. Again, tanking us up, doubling down on that necrotic damage. It's just, it's so incredible. Now, we're taking the Tinchka kit. The reason I like this is 20% healing and plus one revival charge. Now, plus 30% duration of companion healing cooldowns. Not amazing, however, based on our other equipment, I believe it's our sword here, companion cooldowns are reduced by 15%, so we kind of negate a small part of it. For the amulet, we are taking a pale reflection. 20% damage versus enemies with low health. Again, really doubling down on that to kill enemies off quicker. Standard enemies are now always considered to have low health. Doesn't affect boss enemies. Standard enemies like Darkspawn, anything like that, always low health. Because we stacked it so high, if we do our light attacks, they crumble. And defeating enemy grants 5% ultimate, again, just doubling down on that. And an extra 20% necrosis damage because we might as well pump as much into that as we can. 
For a ring, we're taking the call of the hall, 50% takedown damage and 50% stagger and gain a random advantage on a takedown. It's an incredible ring. And because I like using the bow so much, 25% arrow regeneration rune. And for another ring, the Paragon's Knuckle. And this just helps tank us out because we are going to be in the melee all the time. 30% defense, plus 10% defense, plus 20% resistances while at low health. And you can't take up to 25% damage, or sorry, you can take up 25% damage of your maximum health from a single hit. So if you get hit with a big, big attack, you're only going to be taking 25% maximum, and that is a lifesaver. And 25% strike ability damage, because that pairs very nicely with the abilities we are using. Now, obviously we know our ultimate ability is the Murder of Crows. However, we're going to take Explosive Daggers. We're going to take a 1,000 cuts. Strike ability, as you can see there. Which, again, 25% strike ability damage. And Static Strikes. Another strike ability. And what you'll notice is all of these are only one momentum. And we have one that applies Sunder and one that applies Weakened, so we really, really rounded our abilities out here. So, let's go take this into combat and I'll show you how it works. Okay, let's go. Now we see we have standard enemies and you'll see just how quickly they crumble in front of us. Now, as to show you what setting we are on, if I come into here, you will see we're playing on medium. Uh, again, this all works as it will, as normal. And if we charge up our attacks, you'll see just how much damage we do here. Now you see we have the big enemies here. So, if we were to come into here, we actually don't have any of our momentum yet, so that's okay. I forgot, I've been testing this out so much. Let me show you our charge attacks. And there you go. If I show you our arrows, we know we do extra armor. And there you go. And again, if we try and do our blocks, there you go. You see we stunned them with the necrosis. And we landed all sorts of afflictions. And you'll see just how much we do. And if we keep hitting them with these, and then do a takedown, you'll see we got three adrenaline, we got electric armor, we have rally party, and I wasn't reading the rest. And that works if we keep building up our momentum. So as you see, they are now staggered. Do this again. And there you go. Now if we were to pick an enemy like this, you'll see we have combo opportunities. So let's do our explosive daggers with Nev's Icebreaker. And there you go. Huge damage, and that's before we even get into our ultimate. So if I take this over here, let's try and aggro a bunch of enemies. Yeah, we'll come over here. Okay, let me show you. And there you go. And again, as you can see, we hit loads of enemies with our charged attack. And you can see the stagger builds up very quickly with our charged. As well as all of our other attacks. You'll see we still have our quickened. And despite the fact that our charged attacks are using, I think it was 25 or 15% of our abilities, as I'm trying to talk and concentrate, we still have loads of momentum built up. And you see our hip fire attacks are even doing a bunch of damage too. And if we land that, you'll see we landed more necrosis. We built up our momentum for our, or our stagger, sorry, for our takedown. And you see we have loads of abilities available. We have our stagger, we have immovable, we have deflect. We land bleeding with our attacks like this. And there you go, you see even our light attack did a bunch of damage there. Okay, so that was our build done. I really hope you guys enjoyed. If you have, please like the video and let me know in the comments what other things you take, what other abilities, what other weapons, all that fun stuff. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. We are doing a Let's Play, we've done streams, we've got more build guides coming. And yeah, hopefully, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye guys.